Ever feel like uh, when you're choosing your airplane seat, it's like a game of chance? Totally. You check in right at that 24 hour mark, you're like, okay, I'm ready. And then BAM! All that's left is the middle seat between someone who's like doing a podcast and someone who's reclined all the way back. Oh, the worst. So on that note, for this deep dive, we're going to try to give you some strategies for upping your seat selection game. We're taking some insider tips from this really popular travel podcast, and honestly, they had some wild stuff in there. Yeah, it is kind of crazy, right? You don't really think about it, but picking the right seat can totally make or break a trip. For real. But I guess when you think about it, like being uncomfortable, like really uncomfortable, it kind of goes against those basic things we all crave, you know, like having your own space, feeling in control, even just a little peace and quiet on a crazy crowded plane. Yeah. It's hardwired. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like we turn into cave dwellers up in the air, just looking for a little refuge. Yep. Speaking of refuge, the podcast we're looking at today did this really funny bit on the most universally hated airplane seats. Oh, I love those. Every time I listen to one of those, I'm like, yep, been there, hated that seat. Yeah, and it's so interesting how consistent people are. It's like this collective groan heard round the world when the drink cart comes by and you realize you're right next to the bathroom. Ugh, don't even get me started on the bathroom seats. I know, right? <laughs> Top of the list of awful seats for sure. <laughs> The podcast listeners did not hold back either. I think one called it a non-stop olfactory assault. Which, let's be honest, it kind of is. Though it's not just the smell, yeah, that's bad. But it's also people going in and out constantly, that door slamming every two seconds, and then like every once in a while, the flush that sounds like Niagara Falls. It's too much. It's like trying to chill in a phone booth, but it's also at a rock concert. The worst of both worlds. And then there are those seats right in front of the exit row. You're so close to extra leg room, but it's just a different kind of torture. Oh yeah, the no recline nightmare. You know, I get why they do it, for safety and all, but man, when you're stuck upright for like four hours, brutal. Talking about a mixed blessing. But those pale in comparison, I think, to the trifecta of awfulness, the middle seat in the last row. They even had a listener question about this from a Janie in Atlanta. Jamie, if you're out there, we feel you. Oh man, the last row middle seat is truly a gamble that no one wins. You're by the bathroom, you can't recline, and you're usually surrounded by people who booked last minute, so they're just as bummed as you are. It's like the airline's way of punishing procrastinators or something. Right. Speaking of those last minute bookings though, what about those times when you don't have the luxury of planning out your seat like it's a military operation? Oh, I know those times. Say you're like Jamie in Atlanta. What can you do to avoid the worst of the worst when it's down to the wire? So the podcast hosts had like a whole survival guide for this kind of a situation, for those last minute bookings. Yeah, it was pretty good. I think the first thing they said was to always check Seat Guru. Oh, Seat Guru. You ever use that? Seat Guru is my go-to, honestly, even when I'm not booking last minute. For those who don't know though, it's basically like a website where you can look up seat maps for pretty much every airline. You just put in your flight info and boom, it shows you which seats to avoid, which ones are good, all that. Yeah, it's super simple to use. I but it's amazing how helpful it is, especially if you're like in a rush and about to book whatever's left. It really helps you avoid those, oh no, I'm in for a bumpy ride moments. Totally. But even with Seat Guru, sometimes the only seats left are the ones that make you wish you'd driven. Uh, tell me about it. And in those cases, the podcast host actually suggested maybe just bite the bullet and pay for an upgrade. Honestly, yeah. Like, it used to be upgrade was a splurge. But these days, with all the budget airlines and smaller seats, sometimes it feels like a necessity, especially if it's a long flight. I'd rather get where I'm going, feeling like a human, you know? Totally. Like, well, I considered an investment in my sanity. Right. Now, they also mentioned a tool I hadn't heard of before. Expert Flyer. That sounds intense. It is kind of next level, I'll admit, but it's a game changer if you fly a lot, or even if you're just really, really serious about getting the best seat possible. It's basically this app that lets you set up alerts for specific flights and seats. So if something opens up, even after you've booked, it'll tell you. Wait, so even if you're stuck with like a middle seat in the back row of doom, there's still hope. Exactly. Sometimes people miss their flights or connections change or airlines even release more seats later on. Expert Flyer just helps you jump on those seats before anyone else even knows they exist. Like having a secret weapon in the airline game. <laughs> I love it. Okay, but let's say, for argument's sake, that you're not quite ready to dive into the world of like flight alerts and seat sniping. 
What if you can plan ahead and book in advance? Are there things you can do to like increase your odds of getting a good seat from the get-go? So the podcast hosts, they were very clear about this. If you want to up your seat game, check in the second that window opens. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of crazy. Like who's setting an alarm for 24 hours before their flight? But those good seats, they go fast. It's true. I've definitely been burned before thinking I had time and then bam, stuck with a view of the wing. Not exactly what I had in mind. And that actually reminds me of another strategy from the podcast, the window and aisle trick. Oh, I've used that one, actually. <laughs> it's surprisingly effective. It really is. For anyone who hasn't heard of it, basically, if you're traveling with someone, you book the window and the aisle seat in the same row. And since most people don't want to be squished in the middle, there's a decent chance you'll get the whole row. Exactly. And even if someone does book that middle seat, chances are they'd be happy to swap with one of you for a window or aisle anyway. Totally. It's like win-win almost. Okay. So we've talked about deciphering seat maps, using tech to our advantage, all that good stuff. But realistically, sometimes things happen. Sometimes you end up with a boarding pass and a seat that makes you want to cry a little. <laughs> Any hope for those situations? Last minute miracles, maybe? Well, the podcast had one last tip, and honestly, it's something people forget all the time. Just ask. Ask, like ask for a different seat. Exactly, like when you're at the gate, just politely ask if there have been any upgrades or seat changes. You'd be surprised, sometimes people miss flights, connections get messed up, or maybe someone just decides they want to be closer to their friend, and suddenly there's a way better seat just sitting there. It's like finding a $20 bill in your pocket, but for airplane seats. I love it. The best feeling. Well, this has been super helpful. I feel like we've gone from being intimidated by seat maps to like actual airline seating ninjas ready to take on any flight. It really is all about knowing the tricks, right? Avoiding those terrible seats, using the tech, and never being afraid to just ask. You never know what might happen. Exactly. So next time you're booking a flight, remember what you learned here. And as you plan your next trip, think about what matters most to you when it comes to seats. Maybe you're all about that over-the-wing stability. Or maybe you're a front-row fanatic who wants to get off the plane ASAP. Whatever your thing is, just remember, you have the power to make your flying experience a little bit better. Safe travels, everyone. <laughs>